measuring the cost of living. So we have learned about the GDP, which actually is a family of statistics, right? Remember, nominal GDP, real GDP, per capita GDP, GDP growth rate, GDP deflator, and inflation rate. So GDP is used to measure, relatively speaking, how rich, how poor a nation, country, or city is. So our next topic in macroeconomics is about measuring the cost of living. How expensive to live, for example, in Houston, Texas, compared with living in Tampa Bay, Florida. So based on common sense, we know the living expense or cost of living varies depending on where you live. So for example, here from apartments.com, so I searched San Diego, California. So you can see it from this neighborhood in downtown San Diego. So for typical decent looking apartment, the monthly rental price for a studio runs between $2,000 to roughly close to over $5,000. And here I have another page, that's the downtown area in Tampa, Tampa Bay, Florida. And you can see Relatively speaking, the rental price is much cheaper in Tampa Bay. So for example, for these two, the monthly rental price for studio ranges between roughly $1,500 to slightly over $3,000. So you can see, relatively speaking, the cost of living, for example, looking for a house, looking for apartment is much cheaper in Tampa Bay, Florida, than in San Diego, California. And also in terms of wage, remember wage is the cost for business. If you run a business and you have to hire people, then the wage you pay is your cost. So if you remember this website called Glassdoor, so if you work as a registered nurse in San Diego, California, so the average annual salary is about $83,000 per year which is 26% above the national average. And here, since I didn't register an account for Glassdoor, so something annoying here. So if you work as a, in the same profession, registered nurse in Tampa Bay, Florida, you should expect your average salary is about $56,000, which is 15% below national average. So you can see there's a huge gap, even for the same professional resident nurse, I think it's very important now, given the current medical crisis, you can see there's a huge wage difference. So these just an examples would give you some basic idea. Cost of living varies by a lot within the United States. Think about the difference between Tampa Bay, Florida, a major city, and the San Diego, California, another major city. So we are going to study another microeconomic statistic, so-called the consumer price index. And we can also calculate the inflation rate based on the consumer price index. Remember previously, we can calculate the inflation rate based on, you also remember, so-called the GDP deflator, right? So now in this chapter, chapter 11, measuring the cost of living. So I'm going to talk about another service called the Consumer Price Index. And I'm going to use another U.S. federal government website called the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. How to get to this website? You can simply go to Google. I assume everybody knows how to Google, right? So you can simply type the acronym BLS and the first thing pops up, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay, so this is the home page. You can see this so-called consumer price index, right? So far, you don't have know anything about consumer price index. Let's take a look at some specific information. So I just expanded the subjects. And here we have inflation and prices, right? Let me go to consumer price index. Consumer price index basically measures how expensive to live in a major urban area in the United States. So again, how to calculate 
this number. So it's by a survey. So basically the US government, Bureau of Labor Statistics, right, conducts a survey every month in major urban areas, so for example, Dallas, New York, Los Angeles, and they ask a basic question like, so for example, if you are a typical American consumer, what do you buy every month to make ends meet or to maintain a decent standard of living or quality of life? So for example, you need to buy food, right? And you have to be more specific. So for example, I need to buy bread. I need to buy milk. And also I pay for gas and I pay for housing, I pay for education, I pay for service, for example, I get a haircut every month. And maybe some other stuff, pay for education, tuition, expense, some people pay for entertainment, I spend, so for example, roughly $20 or $50 per month on professional game, maybe NBA, a cheap ticket price, I buy it from ESPN or some other website. So consumer price index, we can get some idea here. Let's take a look at the CPI data. And we have regional resources here. So for example, let me open Dallas, Texas. And let me also open Houston. Here, you can see this is basically a bunch of borrowing numbers, right? So we have year from 2010 to 2020. And then we have monthly number, January, February. We have like annual, the whole year, half one, half two, the first half in that particular year, the second half in that particular year. So if you just look at this number by itself, it does not make any sense. So for example, in January 2020, the consumer price index for Dallas, Texas is about 238, right? This is just a boring number. It itself does not make any sense. It's only going to make sense once we compare this number with another city. So remember this number in January 2020 for Dallas, Texas, right? 238. Now let's take a look at Houston, February 2020, 230. Which number is bigger? This Dallas number is bigger, right? So that means, on average, it costs you more money to maintain a decent quality of life, a standard of living in Dallas, Texas and Houston, Texas. Or, to make it short, it costs you more money to live in Dallas than in Houston, Texas.